On the dark and fateful night of March 12, 2016, a frantic call was made to the police. A woman reported that she and her boyfriend had been attacked at their home. The police rushed to the scene, ready for anything, but what they found was beyond their wildest imaginations. Blood was splattered on the floor, and the worst was yet to come. Police found a knife covered in blood, lying discarded on the floor. A gun was also found, but what the officers encountered next was a scene straight out of a nightmare. They found two lifeless bodies. This shocking incident left many questions unanswered. What really happened here? Who was the killer? What was the motive behind the attack? Let's take a look at the complex web of events of this incident and find the answers to these questions. Bianca Edmonds was born in 1986 in Shepparton, Australia. She was raised by her mother, Ellen, and was taught to be a polite and well-mannered young lady. However, as she grew into adulthood, she blossomed into a confident and radiant young woman who captivated everyone with her striking beauty. She was a real beauty, with her gorgeous brown hair and enchanting eyes. No wonder everyone was drawn to her warm and friendly demeanor. In the northwestern suburb of West Motors, Bianca met Michael Capocini, who was born in 1990, four years after Bianca. The two quickly started a relationship and were committed to each other even though they were not formally married. Bianca became pregnant in 2013 and gave birth to a boy in 2014. At first, they were over the moon with joy, but as time passed, they started to argue more and more. Their arguments became so intense that they eventually ended their relationship. They left their young son in the middle of a broken family. After the breakup, Bianca and Michael became involved in a fierce custody battle over their son. It was during this time that Bianca met Glenn Cassidy. He was born in 1973. 13 years older than Bianca. He was working as a heavy vehicle operator in Shepparton. He was a simple man with some difficulties in reading and writing. After meeting on a dating app, Bianca and Glenn quickly began a committed relationship. Before long, they found themselves in a deep and intimate connection. However, Bianca and Michael's destructive disagreements didn't stop growing. As Bianca and Michael's custody battle continued, Michael, too, found a new partner, Silvana. Michael and Silvana settled into Michael's house in northern Melbourne. Silvana took Michael's side in the conflict. Meanwhile, Glenn remained supportive of Bianca. In the end, though, Bianca was awarded custody of their son, and Michael was only allowed to visit him once a week. However, Michael wasn't following the court-ordered schedule for visiting their son, which frustrated Bianca and caused frustration for Glenn as well. In February 2016, Bianca and Glenn got married. Bianca decided to keep her surname after the wedding, which was strange. And soon after the marriage began, she began to manipulate Glenn regarding Michael. She asked Glenn to protect her and her son, and would often bring up the subject to start arguments. She frequently criticized him, using terms such as spineless, piss-weak, and coward. She also refused to have physical intimacy with Glenn until he took care of the situation and resolved the matter with Michael once and for all. She even went as far as suggesting that Glenn should kill Michael. Sadly, Glenn began to agree with Bianca to kill Michael, so they devised a plan to make it happen. But on March 12, 2016, their dangerous idea led to a terrible event that changed the lives of four families forever. On March 12, 2016, the police received a call from a woman named Silvana in northern Melbourne. She told the police that she and her boyfriend, Michael, had been attacked at their home. When the police arrived, they witnessed a horrendous crime scene. Outside the house, they found the lifeless body of Glenn Cassidy, who had suffered stab wounds. Inside the house, they found Michael Capucina, who had been shot. Silvana told the police that Glenn had come to their home and knocked at the door. Michael became suspicious about his arrival and armed himself with a knife and went to answer the door. They had a conversation through the door, but Michael felt safe enough to open it and shake hands with Glenn. But then Glenn pushed Michael back inside and a fight broke out. Glenn shot Michael in the face and Michael was able to stab Glenn during the struggle. Despite being injured, Glenn followed Silvana with the intention of killing her as well. However, when he tried to shoot her, there was no bullets left in the gun. So Glenn decided to kill Silvana by beating her. But because Michael had stabbed him, he had lost a lot of blood. Therefore, he could not kill Silvana and eventually passed out. Silvana was still alive, but she was severely hurt. Glenn's final words were, tell the kids I love them and tell Bianca I love her. I shot Michael. Initially, the police arrested Silvana for the murder of both men 
but later they realized she was also a victim. Meanwhile, Bianca avoided any questioning for months and pretended to be innocent. Nevertheless, the police continued investigating the case because they believed there might have been another person behind the crime who wasn't present at the scene but was the mastermind behind the plan. During the investigation, the police found a text message from Glenn to Bianca. In the message, Glenn said, I love you, Bianca, and I am doing something you don't know about and you wouldn't agree with. In response, Bianca replied, don't do anything stupid and don't make me feel sorry for you. Both messages had incorrect spelling and missing pronunciation, but the grammar was correct. When the police questioned Bianca about the messages, she claimed she didn't type them. She said the punctuation was incorrect, which wasn't her writing style, and that maybe Glenn had typed both messages. The police didn't have any solid evidence to arrest her, so they let her go. Time passed and the police still didn't have enough evidence to arrest Bianca. Meanwhile, Bianca received 307 Australian dollars from Michael's death and found herself a new romantic partner, Todd Bookin, through a dating app. She found Todd only two weeks after Glenn's death and decided to move in with him after two months. However, Todd had a history of violence and was sentenced to almost eight years in prison for slitting his ex-wife's throat and stabbing her half-sister in front of her six-year-old son. Bianca had kept her past a secret from Todd. She had told him that her former husband had died from cancer, but the truth was eventually uncovered. Todd learned the truth about Bianca's lies through the news, so he asked her about the truth and she confessed to him that Glenn had died because of her. She told Todd that she felt guilty about it. Todd felt shocked, went to the police and told them what Bianca had told him. The police were already suspicious of Bianca because they had found Bianca Edmonds fingerprints on a hand-drawn map of her former fiancé's home. When the police questioned Bianca again, she denied any involvement in the crime. She claimed to have no knowledge of the map either. Despite her denials, the police continued to investigate her. It took the police a long time to build a strong case against Bianca. After two interviews, they still didn't have enough evidence to charge her, but the second interview helped the police to uncover new leads in their investigation. Finally, in June of 2019, three years and three months after the deaths of both men, Bianca was arrested by the police. Bianca Edmonds was on trial in the Supreme Court of Victoria for the murder of Michael Cappuccino that took place in West Meadows six years previously. The prosecution argued that Bianca was the mastermind behind the plot that resulted in her husband, Glenn, obtaining a gun and killing Michael. As the trial was coming to an end, the jury listened to a series of phone calls between Glenn and his wife. These calls were recorded because Glenn had installed a phone app that recorded many of his conversations. While many of the calls show Glenn to be desperately in love with Bianca, some of them captured him speaking in code with his biker brother, which police believed was an attempt to get a gun. Bianca had been accused of threatening to leave Glenn if he didn't commit the murder. According to reports, Bianca told many people, including her own family members, that she wanted Michael gone. She was quoted as saying, I want Michael out of the way. I want him gone. I wish he'd just leave us alone and not try for our son. Bianca's court case had reached its third trial. In the first trial, the jury couldn't come to a final decision. The case was thrown out in the second trial because of a problem with how the final arguments were presented. But during the third trial, Bianca's mother, Ellen Edmonds, took the stand and spoke about a phone call she received from her daughter that day when both men died. Bianca was crying and sobbing and told her mother that the death of Glenn wasn't supposed to happen. She also said, it was all my fault. Bianca Edmonds was found guilty of murder by a 12-person jury in the Supreme Court of Victoria. Edmonds attempted to assert her innocence, but it was later discovered that she had been controlling her husband, who was 13 years older than her, by promising him kinky sex. She was accused of instructing her husband, Glenn Cassidy, of killing her former lover, Michael Cappuccino, back in March of 2016. The minimum sentence for murder in Victoria is 25 years, which means she won't be able to leave prison until 2047. Soon, Bianca will receive punishment from Justice Lex Lassery. Thank you for watching True Crime Prime. Kindly subscribe to our channel and remember to like, share, and comment.